hey there everybody and welcome back to this presentation on anchoring biases this is another part of our cognitive biases series i'm your host dr donnelly snipes in general the anchoring biases is, is the tendency to rely too heavily on one aspect of a situation or piece of information when making decisions usually this is the first piece of information acquired on the particular subject there are several different anchoring biases the first one we'll talk about is the common source or common method bias this means using research or information from only one source or sources that are very similar or use the same methods examples news uh, my mother used to work for um, the Associated Press as well as Gannett News Service others out there include Reuters these are organizations that compile news stories and then they send them out they disseminate them to newspapers and television stations all over the country so you may be thinking that you're getting independent news when you look at ABC News in Kansas versus CBS News in Atlanta but they may be getting all of their news stories or the majority of their news stories from a central aggregating organization for example if, if you call it that um, so it's important to recognize that you may be getting fed the same information from different uh, news outlets they may be getting their information from the same place you may be using information that is gotten from the same perspective for example the US only so um, people who only get their information from uh, researchers in the US or from news sources in the US may be missing big perspectives when I look at uh, treatment protocols and how to address particular mental health issues yes of course I look at what the US National Institute of Mental Health for example says on it but I also look at other countries and how do they what are their best practices for treating this particular issue because I want multiple perspectives to inform my decision <clears throat> your own friends and colleagues well we tend to be in sort of a mental vacuum sometimes when we are communicating with our own friends and colleagues because they share they often share similar perceptions to us and they get their information from similar places as we do uh, so they may be contributing to that anchoring bias because we're not getting contradictory or or um, differently informed input so what are the solutions seek multiple sources even contradictory ones if you are in a relationship for example and um, you think it is just the greatest relationship ever um, and your friends are like hey yeah that's the greatest relationship ever uh, well that's that's great but what does your pastor say what does your therapist say for example maybe they have a different perspective on what's going on uh, and, and this applies more toward to um, things like news and current events then it may may apply to uh, relationships and look for the confounding variable this is what I do when I read research studies all the time because it's impossible especially when dealing with humans to account for every possible um, variable that could be contributing to a particular um, situation or scenario that could be potentially causing depression or cancer or um, particular viruses or making people susceptible um, so it's important to look and say hmm I wonder what else could be causing this or what else could be contributing to this besides what is being spelled out for me right here conservatism or insufficient revision is another bias that we often encounter 
Examples could be expecting people in current relationships to behave like people in old relationships or despite having several successes, still seeing oneself as a failure. What we've got here is a, a refusal, if you will, to let go of old premises, old beliefs, even in the face of contradictory information. If we're in a relationship with somebody who is just, you know, the cat's meow and treats us really well and it's a very healthy relationship, if we still have a part of us that is looking for scanning and expecting them to behave like other people did in other relationships, that may be uh, the conservatism or insufficient revision bias because we've, uh, we're still, part of us is still expecting them to fulfill that, um, uh, uh, that old belief, even though we have all this information to the contrary. There's a quote from a movie series that I like called, uh, called Jesse Stone and the movie comes, or the quote comes from the movie, Jesse Stone Lost in Paradise. If you don't like the answers you're getting, check the premises. If you keep getting answers that just don't seem to fit, step back and examine whether you're considering all of the factors. Examine whether you're using outdated information to make current decisions. Remember to examine situations based on the facts in the present context and the current validity of prior beliefs. Just because we get new information doesn't necessarily mean our old beliefs don't have some validity to them, but we need to evaluate how valid are they now? You know, beliefs that I held when I was eight years old are pretty, for the most part, invalid now that I am 50 years old. Another bias is called functional or role fixation. And this is when we see things as needing to be used only how they're supposed to be used or seeing people being in roles and only doing certain very well-defined things in their roles. And this really keeps us stuck in a box where we're not able to think creatively or adapt efficiently. Examples, and I love, uh, working on this cognitive bias in, in some of my classes because it's a fun activity. I give people duct tape, paper clips, mosquito netting, um, and I ask them, what could you do with this? And I encourage them to get past what the thing was originally made for. For example, taping ducts or uh, clipping papers together. Uh, what else could you use it for? Get outside the box, be creative. The same is true for roles. You know, we often think of people as being in particular roles and it's very um, narrow in what we expect them to do or how we expect them to act. The solution to this is what I've termed the MacGyver principle or creative problem solving. For example, back oh gosh, 10 years ago, maybe the car was something that got you from point A to point B. And that's all it was. And then comes Uber. Uh, and people started figuring out that, Hey, my car can also be something that I can use to make money. So that gets out of that role fixation. Seeing the car is just a way to transport me from point A to point B. Art therapy using clay pots to process emotions. There are a lot of art therapy activities that you can do with clay pots, not just planting plants in them. Balloons or bubbles are only for parties, um, but that's not true. Balloons are great things that you can use that typically aren't gonna break lamps and stuff. If you, 
if it's a rainy day outside and the kids have a lot of energy or the dogs have a lot of energy uh, blowing up balloons and tossing them around can be a way to get out energy it's not just something to look at to use for a decoration bubbles blowing bubbles is something that we do at parties as well but it can also be a great um, activity especially for kids but for adults too to encourage slower breathing and trigger that rest and digest um, response to tame the HPA axis blowing bubbles re requires us to breathe in a big breath we hold it for a second we get the bubble stuff in place and then we exhale slowly and that actually calms our stress response down and computers or iPads typically we think of them as a way to process information write papers send emails do things like that but during the pandemic we also started seeing them as ways to visit other people yes we're not visiting in person but sometimes we couldn't so through an iPad or through a computer we were able to virtually visit people and still get that face-to-face -face sort of engagement um, even though we weren't able to be there in an actual person and the law of instrument reliance on only tools or methods currently known and this also leads us to stuckness or inability to get outside of the box for example math a lot of times when you do math you're taught there's only one right way to do this and I can tell you after homeschooling my kids um, there are multiple different ways to go about solving equations and still get the right answer um, so relying only on one particular method to to solve a problem may prevent you from seeing other ways to solve the particular problem anger management and addiction are two other examples reliance on only what you know for addiction if you know 12 steps is the way to go well what if 12 steps doesn't work then what do you do it, uh, for anger management cognitive behavioral therapy what if cognitive behavioral therapy doesn't seem to work for this person do you just keep applying it and thinking hey if I apply it enough maybe it'll work no that is a fallacy um, and and I'm not sure exactly who said it there's a lot of argument about who was the first to say that the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing and expecting different results uh, so the law of instrument encourages us to step back if we try doing something with a method that is known and it doesn't work then look for other methods um, emotional regulation and interpersonal communication are two other examples if we only use the skills and tools that we currently have we may not be effective at regulating our emotions or communicating with other people um, so we need to break this law of instrument and be willing to explore um, new strategies be willing to consider that there might be other instruments out there other tools that actually work better and be willing to to search for them ask for them the anchoring bias is is the tendency to rely too heavily on one aspect of a situation or piece of information when making decisions usually this aspect is the first thing we noticed or this piece of information is the first piece of information we got and we just take it to be the whole thing when in reality it may only be a part of what's actually happening or only one way to solve a particular problem this causes us to fail to notice improvements in behavior if we rely on only the first thing that we saw uh, then we don't see improvements as they happen it may cause us to fail to notice differences among people 
if we base our assumptions on how one person acts and assume that everybody's going to act that way or rely on faulty or incomplete data all of these can contribute to increased feelings of depression helplessness and hopelessness anger and anxiety use those strategies to combat the anchoring bias step back get creative get outside of the box ask yourself regularly even if you think you know everything about a particular topic step back and ask yourself what am i missing what else could there be what are some other perspectives in order to make sure that you're seeing the whole picture